93.7 WMMS. I got another $1,000 for you in about 10 minutes, exactly, if I get it right on the nose. It's a grand courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. You get it about a baker's dozen throughout the day, about 30 past the hour. So plenty of those coming uh, for you. A lot of people with a lot of thoughts on the salad situation. I'm always fascinated by how people <laughs> what gets people uh, riled manifest up. <laughs> yeah. it. Well, you know, I mean, uh, to most people, a salad is meat-free. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people say. Somebody else said, I'll have croutons marinated in dressing for a snack. Pound cake salad like that lady uh, whose boyfriend put her dog in the freezer. Remember that? Yeah. Out in New Mexico? He had her marinating in Italian dressing in the fridge. In Italian dressing? Italian dressing. Mm-hmm, in Italian dressing. Out there in New Mexico, where uh, that was 10 years ago at least, they said, well, in New Mexico, it's legal to eat dog. We were talking yesterday about how South Korea because of changing habits and culture and things like that. They have outlawed um, grooming dogs or raising dogs specifically to be eaten. Now, that won't go into effect for another three years, but it might surprise you to know that there are only five states in the in the U.S., sorry, seven, that have explicitly outlawed eating dog. So it's theoretically legal in every other state. Ohio is not one of those states. So I'm sure that it's frowned upon. I'm sure you can't go to a store and get it, but it is not unless they've changed something here in Ohio. This looks like a relatively recent article that it's still uh, technically legal. California, Georgia, Hawaii, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, and Virginia are the only states that explicitly outlaw dog meat. So Mary can't even go get uh, dog meat uh quiche or anything that you might want to eat but uh listen let pound cake have his salads however he wants them Uh, now a a lot of people uh you know they have all kinds of different ideas about what you should do like well like i just said to a lot of people salad is considered meat free i thought Uh, they were making like suggestions for the future salad i'm like what what ingredients do you like i mean (laughs) tia on the blacklist says alan a salad is not a salad without croutons a lot of people would agree with that. I, I'm not one of those people. I don't think, I, I think the point of a salad is you're not putting bread in it. You know, it's like when I moved to Pittsburgh, they put French fries on salads. Perfect. And I didn't understand what was going on because I wasn't down with, I knew nothing about the, the local culinary culture. And so I thought she had made a mistake. That would be a really weird mistake to make, but I was eating at two in the morning or whatever. And she brought it over, and I said, I ordered a salad, thinking, I don't know what I thought she was happening. And she goes, yeah. Because it's not on the menu, right? comes with fries. It's just assumed because that's what they do. I just didn't know that. I was brand new in town. Those are the in- interesting things to learn. I'm proud of the little strides I make to step out of my comfort zone because I've actually grown to enjoy Caesar dressing. I used to hate Caesar dressing. I used to, as a kid, I, I put Caesar dressing in the same category with blue cheese, like disgusting dressings that don't have any place in the world at all. In the world, in the, in the world, entire world. world. Yeah, let alone you know in a food pyramid. But Caesar dressing, okay, it, it's it's okay now. When I worked fine dining thirty plus years ago, I had to make table side Caesar salads. And when Gwen and I went to Vegas this past summer, one night we had dinner at a place and we ordered the Caesar and they make them table side. And I'm like, man, I haven't seen this because it's just not really done anymore. It's time consuming. It's just they want to put on a show. It's Vegas and it's a thing. I guess it's a nice added little thing. But it's extraordinarily rare that you'll go even to a nice restaurant and they'll make the Caesar salad right there. There's just no point. But, you know, in the late 80s, and I'm working fine dining, like you had to bring the cart to the table. Such a they want to, yeah, the, the lemon juice and the oil and the egg, and the, they want to see you do the whole thing. And so I kind of was joking with the guy, I go, now I used to have to do this, so if you got any new tricks, you better clue me into it. I can't. But and he was probably looked, like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He's yeah, just he's like, just like, let okay, me do dude. this. Well, you, whatever. I can't remember sit the last down. He's like, this takes so much time, and it's, it's so annoying. <laughs> And now he's being quietly right. judged mm-hmm. by me 
I can't remember the last time. Doing it before he was born. Someone brought a salt and pepper shaker, to, uh, like, and did it for me at the table. I'm like, what? Why are you doing that? There's, like, I, it's happened, like, once or twice just in my life, but it's so unnecessary. But like, they're like, fresh pepper? You like it a pepper? Like, no one's going to know the difference. Or if you are, well, you're a snob. Well, fresh pepper, though, you're it's- You're a snob you go, if you know this. <laughs> What, you don't like the pepper shaker or the pepper pepper mill? But I don't think anyone's tasting like, this is not fresh pepper. Like, you didn't just make this in the back. Like, if you know if you notice that, then you are a snob when it comes to well, eating. Well, no, you know they're not making the pepper in the back, right? Well, what what is fresh pepper? It's pepper grounds in the grinder. But okay. So they, they grind it rather than, it's freshly like, ground. freshly no ground the pepper. Difference is what I'm saying. Maybe. You might be right. No one's going to know I, the difference. I, I'm, I'm kind of with pound cake on this one where... If you notice a difference, you're a snob. That well, means you're paying so so close attention to, to the condiments that it doesn't even matter what the food tastes like. I would say the only difference is it's less finely ground, so it's probably just a texture thing. You're right. It's not so much of a taste thing. Yeah. But if you have, like, a pepper shaker at home, I think that's way more finely ground than a pepper mill. Yeah. And some people like kind of a... Ch- Chunkier pepper, I guess. A chonky pepper. Chonky boy pepper. I don't think I don't. I haven't put pepper on anything. Like I'm not a. I don't add salt to anything. I don't either. Or, or, or pepper. Like I. Those are useless. I don't even have a salt and pepper shaker at my house. You can always tell. What, a what fi- do you make yourself at home? Because I know you eat out a lot. Like you I don't, don't eat out a lot. He doesn't know because he's now, poor. No. Okay. Well, what do you like? What's <laughs> your, on grocery what's shopping? A, what's a regular pound cake meal that you eat at home that you make for yourself? A wrap. Like, I get a rotisserie chicken okay. and meal prep it the entire week. It's either chicken and rice, chicken in a wrap, a chicken salad, something that I could easily make. Sometimes I have steak strips, and then I'll add, I'll incorporate that into something. But and, you, I, and you'll cook the steak? No. Oh, you just buy pre-made cook? <laughs> yes. So. He's not, is it safe so to say you're- everything's pretty much already made. Yeah, you're, you're just not cooking it. anything, no, right? I don't, I don't cook anything. Uh, in fact, I didn't know that my- I, I made pizza one time, obviously store-bought pizza, but I had to use the oven for the first time, and it wasn't until, like, a month in that I found out that my oven makes a noise when you close the door. So, like, I put it in the oven, and it's fine opening it up, but when you close it, it's like... <laughs> like oh, it so creaks, like, you mean? It's like, like, it's an old, rusty yeah. it's stove. super loud. It's like an ironing board. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa, what is that? So I was doing it again, so it sounded like someone, like, aliens were invading us for, like, a straight five minutes, because I was just seeing it, like, oh, maybe if I just add some oil to it, it'll go away. And then I thought about, hmm, maybe adding oil to an oven probably wouldn't be the best idea. Um, so I just left it alone. It still squeaks. Yeah, it still squeaks. Yeah. Well, we have a pe- we have a pizza stone somewhere, and now that I have this Traeger grill, Gwen's always trying to get on me to like, let's make our own pizza. Let's oh, make our own cool. pizza. Ugh, I that is I don't cool. I don't understand this obsession with making your own pizza. Because it's neat. Like it's, is it's, it? It's fun. Yeah, because... I've done it before. It's fine. It's just like kids there's are a, really gonna like that. There's a billion. Well, yeah, no, for our kid, yeah, but it's just she and I. Like, there's a billion places making pizza better than I ever could, so... I really love Humble's Pizza, and they do it right in front of you at the little bar. That's fine. But that's why people go, so they don't have to do it. I'm like... So I'm, like, trying to kick this can down the road, because I know I'm eventually going to have to do it. Yeah, I imagine it's probably a bitch to clean. Well, the pizza stone, it's probably... You just put the dough on the thing, and then you do it like you normally would, and you put it on the on the grill, and you, you go to town, you let it sit... I don't think it's labor intensive, really, but I guess I don't understand the point. Making your own pizza. I think it's just I don't know. Yeah, if, no. Some people if, are into it. Some people gonna, are way into it. I was gonna say if you're gonna heat up pizza in the oven, might as well it be your pizza. You control the portion sizes. You don't ever have to argue with oh they don't have the ingredients that I like. You can get artichoke. You can get you know. Yeah, no. Whatever you can you if you have some weird stuff you like. I guess that would make more sense. Artichoke. Somebody's like, oh, I only like. Yeah, I like sardines and artichokes, <laughs> but I don't like any of those. Things. Sardines I like. It just not pizza. At, one, at that point, it's just a hobby. Like you want to learn how to make pizzas good at home, and that's. But it's. Great I, for I'm starting to get game. it because I just got like a coffee grinder and a pour over coffee carafe and all this stuff, and I'm trying to learn to make good coffee at home. So if you want to do that with a. Uh, Homemade pizza oven and pizza stone and stuff like that. Have at it. I mean, you should talk to Nolan. I think he makes coffee at home. He does some hoity-toity thing. I got a. Like <laughs> I I tried it and I put it on my story today and somebody hit me up. They're like, "I'll teach you how to do it." So I'm going. Well, there. you got a French press or what are you working? It's with? A, it's a it's pour over crap. Ah, so I see. You you grind it up and then you pour the water over it and you do little circles 
and then you wait a little bit and then you pour a little more. Oh. It takes time. But mm-hmm. the first time I did it, uh, it was not good. But the second time, it was much better. So I'll learn some tricks from an actual, yeah. like a, a coffee specialist from yeah. a, my buddy's restaurant. And he's going he's gonna to give me some tips and hopefully I'll learn how to make good good coffee. Well, it did make fun. me take a huge dump, so it did work. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it is a laxative, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's weird is I have a bunch of like appliances that I don't have room for, nor do I use because I don't buy enough food to use them. Like I got a, a smoothie maker or a blender, not a smoothie maker, but I use it for smoothies. Uh, a, a microwave, an air fryer, a crock pot, uh, what, a, 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 what is that, toaster oven. Like I have all these appliances, and they're just sitting in boxes because I'm like, I don't have the room for this. I'm going to blow a fuse trying to plug all these things in. Um, so don't mom, have the counter space. Yeah, no, and like my mom was like, "Oh, you're gonna love that." She got me an air fryer for Christmas. She's like, "You're gonna love it. Just all the food that you would normally put in the microwave, just put it in the air fryer. It tastes so much better." I'm like, "Okay," and so takes I longer though. I haven't used it. Not yet, that I, long though. I it, mean, it's just a convection. It's tiny convection oven. Yeah, but so. it, it's faster than because the preheat is faster on it. So faster than an oven. Than an oven, but yeah. not faster than a microwave. Yeah. Of course, if you're really that and pressed it for is time, much better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. We make a lot of stuff in the air fryer. No, I'm a big fan of the air fryer. Yeah, those are good. Let me give you $1,000 here, as promised, uh, courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. A chance for you to grab a grand. So I hope that you win. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Cash. That's cash. Enter it now at WMMS.com. If you want to leave us messages, you can drop them for us on the iHeartRadio app. There's a talk back button there you can use. You can just as easily call our after hours line, which is 216-986-8903. Hey, guys. You know Pound Cake's eating that whole order. He was backpedaling on the calories and whatnot. And, Alan, it's not 1,800 calories. That milkshake was probably 1,800 calories. And then all the other stuff. I'm not eating that whole chicken. Oh, he he's talking about your Chick-fil-A from yesterday. Yeah, my Chick-fil-A oh, order. Oh, I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. And Chick-fil-A no, I, order, right. I, there's n- Why would I lie about it? No, if I had the room I believe to, to eat it all, I would. But I get a large fry, a large milkshake. Um, and okay, so one- th- okay, so this is what I was going to ask you. Because okay. yesterday I said, <clears throat> you're talking about an 1,800-calorie order and one sitting. Sure. But it turns out that I probably undershot. <laughs> because you got you said you get two I get chicken sandwiches. Two chi- I get a spicy chicken and a regular chicken. Okay, those are 440 a piece, so that's 880. Mm-hmm. The small chocolate shake, which you just said you do I, not I, get. I, no, I get a large. The small is 600 calories. Uh-huh. And the medium fry. I get a large fry. Large fry. The <laughs> medium fry is 420. So I undershot because that's 1,900 calories. Uh, so and what you're eating is north of 2,000. Definitely north of 2,000 because I get probably about four or five Chick-fil-A sauces. And each of those is oh, like two, yeah. 200 <laughs> calories a piece just for the little. The so little it's like a 2,500 <laughs> calorie a meal. 1,000 calories worth of sauce. Jesus. <laughs> You want to talk about something being smothered in sauce? That will add some weight to my sandwich. Just drip it all off, and it's just it's just that'll add some weight to everything. Yeah. Wow! But those are your calories for the day. I know. That's why. Like I, if that's, that's all, whole, you, that's all he eats a whole day. That's, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, it get, is. That's yeah. why I get a large meal because I'm like, say if I, I go to Chick Fil A usually in the evening. So you um, won't eat all. Be honest. You won't eat all day until you have that at night. First no. of all, that's the worst time you could eat that. No, like what I do is if I go to Chick-fil-A after work, which it, a lot of times I do, or I, it's on a Saturday. If it's on a Saturday, then yes, that's what I will, that will be my meal all day okay. because I'll put the fridge. I don't like fries in the refrigerator, so I'll eat the fries now, and I'll have probably the sandwich, and I'll eat the milkshake. So that's already a thousand ca- over 1,000 calories right there. <laughs> so I have left the spicy chicken sandwich and then all the Chick-fil-A sauce. Um, and then that that's all I have is like a snack later wow. in the day. But at, in the evening, I'll just have that whatever I have left over for breakfast the next day. So I'm not eating it all in one sitting, but it doesn't matter. You're you're talking about 3,000 calories versus 1,500. <laughs> uh, 1, like 1,800 is what I initially thought, and then I was like, I got to look into this. So, cause I because I'm like, I guarantee he's not getting that tiny kid's shake. No, no. absolutely not. Why yeah. would I do that? That, that, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's a waste. Well, listen. 
there are people who eat that kind of food, but still in their brain, they go, I'd like to keep it under a certain number. So they might go for the small shake or they might go for the, the kitty fries. Or when whatever, I go and but- get things. I, get, I know you want to go all in. But I get large because it justifies. I'm like, if if I'm going to kill a tree, I'm going to make sure I get <laughs> full use of that tree. Like all the paper and all the stuff it takes to wrap it. I'm like, no, getting a small is a waste. You get it large for, for some reason in my mind. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I, I'm not getting. I'm not chopping off a piece of the tree. I'm chopping down the whole tree for all the packaging that it takes for this. For so you come up with price. reasons to rationalize, yes. the, rather than just going, "I'm going to do what I want to do." And and the the trees are part of it. The trees are part. It's yeah, like right. bad for the environment. Like uh-huh. think about, if I don't get a large, it's worth. It's not good for the environment. I'm, I'm, <laughs> if this bag is not full. Then I'm wasting a bag, like you know. And this bag, it's a waste if this bag is half full. It needs to be completely full yeah. of food. You're, wa- you're wasting that bag, and it's good. You know, it's not gonna be recycled because there's grease stains all over it. So they're just gonna throw it out. So at least I'm getting full use. The bag has to be hefty. It has to be heavy. Yeah. But no, o- over the course of like a day and a half, I will finish the rest of my Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A doesn't last in my house like a weekend. That that's not a thing. Like you have Chick Fil A to start your day. On, on Saturday, Sunday when it's closed, I will have whatever I have left over for breakfast that Sunday. Breakfast. Yeah. Because wow. sometimes I'll get, like, some chicken nuggies, um, and I'll get, like, a large chicken nugget, and I don't know, it's, like, what, 10, 10 or 12 chicken nuggets. Those things are bomb, you know, with the Chick-fil-A sauce, and it's a nice little, uh, I don't know, protein for breakfast. Chicken nuggets are my breakfast protein. When I used to work from home, I would work remote, and I would Uber Eats Chick-fil-A, yeah. and I would get their chicken nuggets with their hash browns because their hash browns are little little round things, and they almost look like little tokens. I'm like, these little brown tokens are just so damn good, and I would get a large thing of those. Little brown tokens? The <laughs> least they, des- like appetizing called, way to describe yeah, them. Yeah, that's what they called him in Oberlin. Yeah. <laughs> I got to take Whoopsie for a walk so she can make some little brown tokens. <laughs> Wow. So whereas some people might go, well, this is what I'll have for breakfast. This is what I'll have for lunch. You'll have like, you'll order a bunch of food and then spread it out over. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that's pretty common for people to do. I'm like, it's and, and it is the way to go to make sure you smash the fries because fries don't reheat. Yeah. Those, mm-hmm. those, those Chick-fil-A fries, like that's with anything though. Like if I get McDonald's fries, those are the first thing I eat because they get cold the fastest Mm -hmm. and they don't reheat well. Everything else I can manage. Like a a Big Mac, I could leave it on the table (laughs) and not refrigerate it. You can leave it out there for a week and it'll (laughs) be the same. same. (laughs) Still edible. Not not good edible, but you can still digest it and it will look the same. Fries will not. They'll be hard. The physics of French fries are very interesting because even if they make them fresh, you'll get them blazing hot Mm -hmm. and then they're ice cold in about seven minutes. Yeah. Very strange. I still think Chick-fil-A has the best fries. Never had them. I've only ever had a chicken sandwich there. The revolutionary. They, oh, they put a pickle on it. Hmm. Who would have thought of that? It's not the pickle. It's the way it's fried. Like, it just, it's different. It's it's crispy, but it's, like, still juicy. It's not the same. I don't know. I like that Popeye's chicken sandwich It's not the, the same. Most. It's not too a, crispy. I like the crispy. I mean the, the Chick Fil A one's fine, but the only as far as fries go around here, the, there were some Mister Hero gift cards out, like buy one get one free. So I grabbed one of those, Mister Hero. Mm. The only yeah. I have yet to eat Mister Hero. You need I've to try Mister Hero. Been here Hero. for fourteen years. It's That's what time. everybody keeps telling it's me. It's time. Yeah, it's have time. some Mister Hero. The only chicken place I think that can rival um, Chick Fil A is the one downtown Lakewood. I think is is it Mister Chicken or something. No, uh, it's not Mr. Chicken. It's uh, like, it's um, what is it called? I have to look it up. It's down here. Yeah, it's downtown. You're, you're talking Lakewood. about Dave's. Dave's, Dave's hot, hot chicken. chicken. Yeah, that was yeah. really good. But again, their fries, eh? They're they're uh, crinkle they're crinkle fries. cut. Yeah. And I'm like, I I'm with you on that. Yeah, no, but their chicken. I'm like, you guys are damn close. You guys are pretty good, and their sauce is pretty good. You fill out their comment card and tell them where they could improve. Dave's hot chicken is the truth. <laughs> What a, I like the fresh cut fries too, like Five Guys fries. Those are the best. Those are good. Alan, if you think Pound Cake's Chick Fil order is bad, Chick Fil A order is bad. Check out my Arby's order. Let's hear it. One double beef and cheddar. Yeah. Fries, jalapeno yeah. poppers, mm-hmm. Reuben sandwich, and a pop. Okay, <laughs> let's go. I like how that's six thousand calories. Okay, let's do I, it. That wasn't an order. That's. <laughs> 
my order, he says. That's his order. Check out my order. You just pull up and Did they're like, sizes? Huh? Sizes? I'm just going to yeah. assume they're all big, yeah. he's whatever a, the largest he's is. He's a double XL, I'm assuming. Yeah. Double beef and cheddar, double beef and cheddar, fries, jalapeno poppers, Reuben sandwich, and a pop. <laughs> I love it. The only thing that makes Chick-fil-A different is that their breading is half powdered sugar. Hey, that's a pretty sweet hack if that's true. I don't know about that, but, I mean, that's that's smart. Everybody's trying to figure out how to get an edge. You know, you have these food scientists, right? My buddy Steve Schmoller, that was his uh, CV, was being a food scientist. These people who know exactly how things work to make your brain fire a certain way or make something taste a certain way. and mm. Big business, boy. I'm going to break here. If you want to send me a text, 35192. You can watch live if you like.